All right, so what we're going to do here today is we're going to um, figure out how to do a start a painting, digital painting in Photoshop. So I have this photo that I found off the internet that I just wanted to get because it's got a good clear light and dark side. So it's going to make my life easier. So the first thing you want to do is you want to set up your layers. You want to have a layer for individual things, layer for the skin, layer for the blouse, layer, layer for the hair. Okay. I'm also going to do a layer for the outline. So what I'm going to do with this is that I'm going to initially trace this and so you can see this here that's what my tracing looked like I went through and just outlined my general shapes okay what I want to do is I want to have this layer here as a separate layer so I can always refer back to it for my lines as much as you can you actually want to refer to a photograph that you either print out or have somewhere on the screen and look at this when you're painting over here to get things right if you just paint over your photograph like this it's going to drive you insane because you're going to constantly um, see things that aren't quite right yet. Okay, so I'm going to erase this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through on my skin layer. Now I've actually set this up so the blouse and the hair are above it, and that's because I'm going to paint in front of these things are in front of the skin. The hair is mostly in front of the skin. The blouse is covering up the shoulder down here. So I'm putting the skin behind them. Okay, so brush, solid edge, hard edge line. 100% opacity, no pressure control, even though I'm using a pen. And what I'm going to do is I've already set up a color palette here. And I'm going to set a color that I think is basically like a medium tone. Now, you don't have to use realistic colors. I just am. Just why not? Okay. And the big thing I'm going to do with this is that I don't need to use a small, tiny little brush. I am not concerned about that at all. My point here is just to fill in a base color right away. The other thing is that since my blouse and stuff is going to paint over her skin, I don't have to be careful with this edge at all. Um, it's going to be behind stuff. And that's going to be the same thing up here with the hair. So I'm just going to go through, I'm going to put skin up here. And by the way, I want this because if I have individual strands of hair and skin shows through, I want skin to show through. I don't want individual lines to show through. Now I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller here to go in and do the ears. Oh, one second, that was a little bit too far over. Messed up my line. Um, let's try that one more time. So paint this in here. And once again, I'm not really careful about that edge over there because there's going to be hair there. And there we go. Skin color is done. My base skin color is done. I might add a little bit there just in case I'm worried that might show through. Now what I want to do to finish this off is I'm going to go through and I'm going to do some other layers. So for instance, if I go through on the blouse, I'm going to choose a medium color, in this case a pink here, and I'm going to go through and paint through on the blouse. So unlike, if you haven't done digital before, unlike traditional media, the great thing about digital is that it will perfectly cover um, other colors. It's not a situation where, you know, if you have a, for instance, like a, a colored pencil, where you can't really go, it's, it's difficult to go over darker colors, like if you're working on a black piece of paper or something like that. Not the case with digital, it's just going to cover it. So I'm going to pause here, I'm going to do the rest here, but notice the blouse is on the layer above the skin, and I'm going to put some base shapes for the hair in here too real quick. Okay, so now I've filled in the hair. Notice that I didn't go all the way to the edges, and that's because I actually want to have a hair texture where you can see gaps showing through the hair. Now, when I do this with a brush, I am going to go with a smaller brush. I'm going to shrink this down. There we go. Um, and the other thing is that I'm going to turn my smoothing options on. Now, right now this is blanked to make, if this doesn't, if this is grayed out, because when I look at this, it's grayed out, I'm going to go right here. These are my brush options. Make sure that smoothing is checked. All right. And I'm going to turn this on and you can play with this. It kind of depends on how um, smooth of a line you want it to be. But I'm going to try 25% or so, and we're going to see how this goes. And I also am going to turn on my pressure and my size. Actually, I'm just going to turn on the, the size right here. So this is size by pressure. If you can do it, that's awesome. Um, so what this allows me to do is too dark. 
um, go with a slightly thinner brush, obviously. And I think I'll turn this back on, turn the pressure back on. And don't worry about getting these things exactly right. Obviously, you have some stray hairs and strands like that. You can go through and have them have some variety. That's fine. But basically, the idea is that on these edges here, I want to have some chaos that I'm going to build up with some hair and stuff showing through it from there. Okay, so we can continue on with this and then you can get a base layer. But that's basically how you want to set it up. Okay, and at last some finishing touches here just so you can see it. I took me a little bit, but I went through with um, a single strand and you can also take make custom brushes with just a couple dots, but I've put in some more strands of hair just to make the texture feel more natural. And you can see the edges, not quite done yet, but feel a lot better. If I take the outline off, there you go. And by the way, I made a second layer of hair here behind the skin layer, so you can see where the hair comes out from behind her head. I thought about calling it back hair, but that just seemed too cruel. So anyway, so this is a good setup as your base. Remember, use your larger brushes as much as you can, and uh, just fill stuff in and pay attention to what's on top of what.